In October of 2019, Google published a paper in the journal Nature confirming that they had achieved something called quantum supremacy with their prototype quantum processor. And the world went kinda nuts. But what does quantum supremacy actually mean? And how does it affect the future of our world's computing as a whole? Quantum supremacy is a very specific term. Simply put, it means that a quantum computer has successfully run a computation faster than a classical computer ever could. But that's different from the capacity to solve something that's useful, um, or to even solve a broad class of problems. And I think that's, that's the, a source of confusion. Um, yeah, if someone hears supremacy, that means it's the best of everything, right? This is a specific case of, of terminology. Maybe um, it's often, if you know, if you go to conferences, people are feeling it's kind of an unfortunate uh, moniker, but it's one that's stuck. And it, it means this very specific thing, which is that you built a system, you were able to control it to do something in a reliable way that was hard to compute. It's specifically not a useful calculation. We don't know how, how to make use of that probability distribution that was produced. Um, at this point. It, and, and so, you know, that's, that's a pretty big difference from, hey, quantum computing is solved, now on to exponential growth or whatever. Now, at this point, you might be saying, um, what is quantum computing and how does it work? Funny you should ask. We actually now have a deep dive into all of that out right now, which you can watch here, but in brief, Classical computing is the kind of computing that you and I are used to, like on our phones and our laptops and stuff. It's binary computing, which means it uses a system of on or off signals to encode data. That's the ones and zeros that you may sometimes see in the hacking scenes of some spy movies. A one and a zero together is called a bit in classical computing and is basically like a little packet of information. On the other hand, quantum computing is the idea of doing a computation using the laws of quantum mechanics. And they're a little different than classical mechanics. The main difference being that um, quantum systems can be in more than one state at the same time. Again, it's pretty complicated, so if you want even more detail, then go check out our other video on it here. But in the meantime, has the world reached quantum supremacy? Like, is there a machine out there that can perform a calculation faster than a classical computer? Technically, yes. I'd characterize it as the latest high-profile advance in making ever more sophisticated um, quantum computing devices or uh, quantum experiments. What they were able to demonstrate is, I think convincingly, that yes, they were able to construct a system that had a large enough number of quantum degrees of freedom with sufficient control to prepare a state that was extremely difficult to calculate um, to basically predict through by simulating the quantum computer ahead of time. So they successfully built a system that answered a question about quantum mechanics faster than a classical computer ever could. And that kind of makes sense because the quantum processor itself is a quantum system, so it's able to answer questions about quantum mechanics. But all of this is different from it being a computer that's truly able to perform useful calculations or to do all of the things that we think quantum computers might eventually be able to do, like change the way we think about cryptography. That's not to say that this advancement isn't really cool and informative, but you know, it's maybe not like totally paradigm changing. It's more of kind of an arbitrary benchmark that may or may not mean much depending on the task you ask the quantum computer to do. I think they demonstrated some real advances in this quantum classical interface. And that's essential for um, arguing that you can scale a quantum computer to a larger thing. It needs to be able to scale according to simple rules. Um, and so that was, that's, a, I think, a, a laudable outcome of, of, the, of that work. So yes, a team has demonstrated quantum supremacy, but that may not mean what it sounds like. Yeah, it's a step forward in the exciting field of quantum computing, 
but we're still a long way from a universal quantum computer or even a quantum computer that could be anything more significant than like a really cool quantum physics experiment. If you want to know all about the ways that Livermore is working toward that goal of realizing something closer to a universal quantum computer, then let us know down in the comments below and we'll make sure to make that video. If you want more videos like this one, then make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on all of our platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all that jazz. See what you think about another episode of Inside the Lab by checking out the full playlist, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.